coming up on Fresh Dew with Pastor Inkechi Ene. Services by 8. Mr. and Mrs. Wayside cruise to church. By 8.40, then Mrs. Wayside drops. And what's the first place she goes to? The bathroom. She goes to the bathroom, picks up her mirror, checks her makeup, because in these days of social media, they might get me on, the, on social media. I got to look good. Pastor Nkechi Ene and today is a special day. Not only is it a bright sunny day, it's a day that we've set aside to, you know, make a special invitation to you about partnership with Fresh Dew. This is something I'm doing for the very first time after 21 years of ministry, to make a personal invitation to you to join us in partnership with Fresh Dew. And you know, I, I start thinking what's the best way to explain the concept of partnership because there's so many scriptures I could use from the Word of God. But I believe the Holy Spirit gave me a very simple illustration. This is a jigsaw puzzle. And it all comes together. Jigsawing is something we did a lot with my kids growing up. And it all comes together, you know, to make one big piece. And this is the best way to describe partnership. For everybody who's a partner, this could be who you are. Now, one thing we found out jigsaw puzzling is one of the most frustrating things in you know, making a jigsaw puzzle is when one of the pieces is missing and you all get together as a family and you begin to you know, follow the map and try to get the jigsaw together. And once one piece is missing, it's just never really fully complete. That's how important partnership is. That's how important you are as a partner to Fresh Tea. That's how important you will be to Fresh Tea when you join us in partnership. So every single piece is important. Every single member is important. And together we complete the vision and we can really take this word of God undiluted to the ends of the earth just the way God expects us to. If you look at the definition of the word partner, it simply means a sharer, an associate with another in business, one who plays the same role with another in, the game, in a game. It's very important to you know, use the expression same role. And I'll just share this scripture with you and I'll, I'll talk to you some other days about partnership, but this scripture in 1 Samuel 30, Something David said really drives home the importance of partnership together. He says, and I'll just read from the ERV version very quickly. David answered, after some people said some things, you can read the context. David answered, no, my brothers, don't be selfish with what the Lord has given us. He has kept us safe and helped us defeat the enemy. Do you think anyone will listen to you when you talk like this? We share and share alike those who go to battle and those who guard equipment. That was another translation. The ERV says, the share will be the same for the man who stayed with the supplies and for the man who went to battle. Everyone will share alike. David made this order and rule for Israel and this rule continues to this day. So I invite you to join us in partnership. When you go on the website, freshg.tv, there's their links that will show you how you can join us and how you can make monthly contributions or whatever you're led to do to be part of what God is doing in this new day in Fresh Dew. And the, the, the rule or the principle remains the same. For us who go out into the battle, who are out here shooting, speaking the word of God, and for you who support us with your prayers and your financial contributions, we share and share alike. And we're all part of this beautiful puzzle that comes together to form the vision of Fresh Dew. This is real gospel. A pastor was telling me recently of a pastor that he, the pastor he's following has been committing adultery forever. For as long as he has known. And he was asking the pastor here, what do I do? And the pastor was like, you are still in that church. He said, but that's how pastor. The pastor said that the anointing moves more when he does it. 
this guy is a bishop, a bookshop. He has always been a fornicator. And this particular young pastor with him says that he learns fornication under him. As a young believer, true. Not them say, true. How can you, how can you, how can you? Some of you look shocked. That's what happens in a lot of places. How can such a pastor preach what I have preached now? How can they? It is possible when you let the word touch your heart to be married for 24 years and it's only your husband or your wife who has seen your nakedness. To be a believer and before you're married, you keep it zipped up and keep your legs closed. But a wayside hearer, so you are talking your own. You talk, you come out from here. This night, you're on top of another person. Your wife is at home. But you came to church. Why did you come to church? Why? So the, the word will reach me one day. Is that, is that what you want for your life? Should I continue? Don't put limits for some of his area of your marriage. You can come to this church. If it's money they want, I give them some of my books. If it's whatever, but uh, marriage counseling matter, we know how we roll. No pastor should come and counsel us on the area of marriage. And you are there. You are dying. According to Zebedee, you are dead, die. But nobody can touch you in your marriage. Then let it be that you are a chauvinistic male. And now this church has now been landed with a female pastor. And then you say, ah, I've got me Pastor Kesh. Then she will now be telling me everything from a female bias. Oh, you, oh, that you may know me, that I am a man of God. A man of God. And most couples who have come to me for counseling, the women will tell you that they get it. If there is any bias in any area, it's in the favor of the men. If the man needs to get it, he gets it too. But a woman, because I'm a woman, I'm married. So I'll be hearing some of the nonsense things on women. I'm like, are you okay? How can you tell me that because of your job, you don't cook for your husband? You must be mentally affected. Because I cook for my husband. I know what goes on in my home. But you say, I know the church, don't, don't go there. Don't, and you are a poor representation of marriage. Because that's an area you've put a limit. Church, you should not have pre-programmed opinions that block the word out from your life. That makes you Mr. and Mrs. Wayside. Amen. These wayside hearers are people who are distracted in church. They're always distracted. Write down what it means to be distracted. To be distracted. Or to distract. To draw away or divert the mind. Or attention. To disturb or trouble greatly. To draw away or divert the mind or attention. To disturb or trouble greatly in mind. To provide a pleasant diversion for. To provide a pleasant diversion for. Amuse, entertain. You come to church for amusement and entertainment. That's a side attraction. It's not the reason you're coming to church. To separate or divide by dissension or strife. These are the wayside hearers. Their minds are always distracted. Church is going on. You know, I'm the one who can see everybody. But from where you are, you're not supposed to be able to see everybody. But Mr. and Mrs. Wayside, if somebody moves in church, they see them. They are watching the screen always. It's okay to watch the screen. Hey, see that sister, see how she was dancing. You get up and dance your own. Every movement, everything that happens in church, they are distracted. Or they do this. Pastor is preaching in the depth of revelation. He's flowing. I'm in the spirit. And as I open my eyes and look up, I see somebody. Oh, oh, oh. And then, oh. And then, cracking. Oh. How am I supposed to feel in my revelation? Have you, not, have you not just poured water on me? So in the depth of my mysterious revelation, you just be yawning. 
Oh, what's still? The next thing. People do it all. What is that? Why, why did you come to church? Why? Say, Pastor, I slept late. Come for second service. Okay, you are already in second service. Wash your face. You come in late. You're always late. Not sometimes late. You have a job interview with Guarantee Trust Bank. You might say, hmm. Amen, sister, somebody. And your job interview is for 8 o'clock. 8. What time will you be at GTB gate? 6.30. Doing extracurricular activities, speaking the dirty, waiting for the gate man. 6.30. And if for any reason you are late and your interview was 8, how will you come to GTB gate? Is that not how you will come? You run, you are late. But not Jesus Gate. Service is by eight. Mr. and Mrs. Wayside cruise to church. By 8.40. Then Mrs. Wayside drops. <laughs> and what's the first place she goes to? The bathroom. She goes to the bathroom, picks up her mirror. Checks her makeup because in these days of social media, they might get me on the on social media. I got to look good. It's already 8:45. Your interview was by eight. You powder yourself. Okay, sister Joy, you're here. Are you still selling that Dubai weave on? Let's discuss after service. The pastor is on stage. You. Then you enter church. And you tell. Junior, just come and stay with me. I beg, I can't go and do that sign out of. Then come and join Q to be signed out children from Children's Church. We are late already. Let's just stay together. <laughs> and then you go. Then an usher tells you, sit here. I should sit where? Please, I need a fan. <laughs> in my house, I have two ACs in every room and three generators as backup to Nepal. Are you okay? I don't think so. I think you have a problem. <laughs> and that's how you come to church. Then to not add insult to injury, you now sit down. You pop out your gum. Pastor, bless me if you can. I cannot bless you, you are Mrs. Wayside. Even Jesus could not bless them. Is that who you are? Oh, no, no, sorry, I forgot. Everybody here is good ground, right? Church, you find yourself there. What do you do? Move. And you can move and become good ground. Glory be to God. Distraction. You make it hard for a pastor to keep on preaching. You make it hard. But we just keep on because we understand the grace of God. And one day, and that day is today, you will change. Always late. You're not in, let us not enter departments matter. What are you waiting for? Which department do you want us to create for you? Department of hairdressing. Okay, we'll, okay, we'll create department of hairdressing just to help you. You can even be the leader. Just join a department. <laughs> Please now. Join a department. He say, why? Be part of your father's house. Department of barbing and shaving. We'll, decree, we'll create it for, only for Sogema. Only you. How can you be here for so many years? You're not in a department. Say, Pastor, when my children grow and I'm free, I've raised children. So don't give me that crap. A children not a blessing. When you are a single girl, you are everywhere. You got married, one child, you can't see your brake light again. Was that a curse or a blessing? When my children grow. Okay, they have now grown. It's now my grandchildren. My daughter has married. What is that? Look at your neighbor and say, brother, are you Westside? The last point, <laughs> no answer to that question. Everybody check here. Yeah. The last point on that wayside, and I will go home, is they are well positioned. The wayside hearers are well positioned for just one thing. 
And what are they well positioned for? For Satan to steal the word that they have heard. That's what we're here positioned for the manifested word. Here you are positioned for Satan. By the wayside, the birds of the air have no challenge. The Bible says they come immediately to steal the word. Write down these scriptures. Let's read verse 15 first from the Amplified. The ones along the path, that's wayside, are those who have the word sown in their hearts. But when they hear, Satan comes at once and by force, say by force, takes away the message which is sown in them. He comes and he takes it because you were never interested in it in the first place. And he comes immediately. That's why the Bible says in verse 23, like we re- 25 rather, whoever has, to him, more will be given. If you have hearing ears, more revelation will be given to you. But even the little that you have, if you don't have hearing ears, it will be taken away from you by Satan. So as a wayside ground, you are positioned for Satan to steal from you. And you can't increase, you can't get miracles. You can't get the manifested word in your life. Because you are distracted and you put limits on the word of God. Write down Job 1.7. Job 1.7. 1 Peter 5, 8, just two or three more minutes and I'll be done, I hope. Job 1, 7, 1 Peter 5, 8, and 2 Chronicles 16, 9. Write it down again, Job 1, 7, 1 Peter 5, 8, 2 Chronicles 16, 9. Job 1, 7 says, and the Lord said to Satan, from where do you come? So Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro, everybody say to and fro, on the earth, and from walking back and forth on it. First Peter 5, 8. So what's he going to and fro? Looking for who to bless? No. First Peter 5, 8 says, be sober. That means don't be drunk. Be vigilant. That means be alert. Because your adversary, that means your enemy, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking. He's looking for whom he may devour. Devour means to gulp down like a drink. When you gulp a drink down, that's what Satan is looking for. He's looking for the wayside hearers that he can gulp down as a drink. He says, be alert. Don't be sleepy. Be awake. Don't be drunk. Don't be distracted by things of the flesh. Satan is walking about to and fro. But thank God there's somebody else that his eyes move to and fro. And that's 2 Chronicles 16, 9. It says, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro. Say to and fro again throughout the whole earth, to show himself strong on behalf of the good ground, on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. That's what the Bible says. So Satan is walking about to and fro, looking for who to gulp down like a drink, but God's eyes are going to and fro as well. The question is, who are you positioned to find you? Who will find you? Will Satan find you and steal even the little you have? Or will the eyes of the Lord Focus on you, recognizing that your heart is loyal, your heart is focused towards him, your heart is hungry to keep on hearing. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Satan is walking around. Say, Pastor, are you therefore saying Satan comes to church? Yes, in case you don't know, Satan comes to church. Hey, then I will leave this church. Oh. See, fear just hits up. Satan, they come to this church. In demons, they follow him. Yes. So you leave this church. Where are you going to? A church where Satan does not come. Okay, die and go to heaven. Satan goes to church. He comes inside some people. Look at your neighbor and say, are you carrying Satan? Satan comes to church. (laughs) There are some demons that come to church in some vessels. Satan comes to church. But he doesn't come to church to bless you. He comes to church so that as you are even in church, he's stealing the word from you. This heat is hot. It's hot. You're not hearing what pastor is saying. That one don't, I beg you. When they build their church, their church, and they have AC, I will come back. By the gate, somebody annoys you. Bam, he has taken it. Immediately looking to steal and snatch it by force. But there's somebody else who doesn't miss a service in TCC. And his name is Jesus Christ. And he's here right now. Oh, he was so here this morning and he's still here. 
And he comes to bless you. He comes to and fro looking for you to deposit a wave of his glory and a wave of the supernatural and to give you greater understanding. That's why you need to be positioned to be a good ground. Church, there are wayside hearers. There are those who are ground by the wayside. Those who quit hearing the word, those who never hear the word, they will be devoured. Satan will take by force even the little that they have. And if today you found yourself somewhere among those who just come to church to fulfill all righteousness, one hour, 15 minutes, two hours, and that's it for the week, it can get better for you, my brother. It can get better for you, my sister. You can stay awake, take down your notes, do some studying, buy some books, improve yourself. Be like Paul. Don't leave me without the word of God. And that hunger will take you into those things that are ahead that Christ has already purchased for you. Lift your hands and praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Thank him for the word. Sorry we've taken so much time, but you saw what happened. The Holy Spirit had to do what he had to do at the beginning of the meeting. Just thank him. Thank him for the word. Thank him for all his goodness towards you. You say, well, pastor, I'm still not a wayside here. Well, just thank God that you're moving towards being a good ground. Or if you're a good ground, you're going to be a better good ground. Just thank him. Thank him. He's here to change lives. That's what he's about. Thank him. Are you alive but not really living life? Do you know somewhere deep down that something needs to change in the course of your life? Does it feel like you have lost your way in life? Yet to others, you seem to know your way. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Can you believe that somewhere on the inside of you? Do you believe it? He is the answer to every question. And he loves you just the way you are. Today he's waiting for you with arms open wide. And he wants you just the way you are. Will you make a decision today to surrender your life to him and run into those outstretched arms? If you want to do that, say this prayer out loud from the depth of your heart and you will be saved Lord Jesus I come to you today I believe you are the son of God and that you died for me and rose again just to save me come into my heart and make me brand new as you have promised I will live for you all the days of my life. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Congratulations on taking the most important decision of your life. You are now born again and a brand new person. It has all happened on the inside of you. Now you need to grow in your new faith. And what has happened on the inside will surely be reflected in your everyday life. We can help you grow in your new faith. Please call us at 0700 Fresh Dew or email us at saved at freshdew.tv and we'll be here for you. Thank you for watching Fresh Dew today with Pastor Nkichi Ene. We trust you were blessed by today's episode. For further information on Fresh Dew, please call us on 0700 Fresh Dew, which is 0700 3737 4339. If you're calling from outside Nigeria, the number will be plus 234 700 3737 4339. Our phones are open from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. GMT plus one. 
You can also send us an email to info at freshdew.tv and we'll be glad to serve you. We also invite you to like, follow and interact with us on our Twitter and Facebook pages at Fresh Dew TV and also on Pastor Nkechi's Facebook pages at Pastor Ketch. For more information on how you can partner with Fresh Dew and receive Pastor Nkechi's monthly letters and weekly MP3 gifts, please visit our website www.freshdew.tv Once again, thanks for being with us today and we look forward to seeing you next time on Fresh Dew to receive fresh inspiration and direction for your life. Hello and welcome to Fresh Dew. You can now watch Fresh Dew with Pastor Nkechi Ene every day on My Faith TV from Monday to Friday by 9.30 p.m. West African time or 10.30 p.m. Central African time from the 1st of July, 2019. Child of God, seek to know the word of God. Seek to get a revelation for yourself. Find out more on our website, freshdew.tv. Fresh Dew, giving you fresh inspiration and direction for your life. Romans 10, 17 says, So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You can order today's message and other past messages on our website store, freshdew.tv. It is available on MP3 and CD and also on MP4 and DVD just as seen on TV. Fresh Dew, giving you fresh inspiration and direction for your life.